Have you ever found yourself in a pissing match with someone? You don't really know how you got there and worse, you don't really know how to get out of it. <laughs> Have you felt sometimes like your conversations are getting louder and yet you're not really making any progress and feeling understood? Or maybe are you avoiding important conversations because you already know the other person doesn't agree with you on this particular point and you'd rather steer clear altogether? Hi, I'm Natasha Helfer. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm a certified sex therapist. I have almost 25 years of experience working with couples and individuals. I run a group practice called Symmetry Solutions where me and my team want to help you achieve better mental, relational, spiritual, and sexual health. These videos are ways we are going to give you tips and strategies to do just that. Usually people are stuck in conversation ruts because they are in one way or another bringing the I'm right, you're wrong communication style to the table. This is a super common complaint people bring into counseling when dealing with their spouses, their friends, or their family members. After all, most of us come to our ideas and beliefs pretty honestly. We think we've reasoned out our perspectives. And after all, if I've come to this conclusion, then I must be right. And therefore you must be wrong. <laughs> this is a form of either or thinking, black and white thinking. And we will address what you can do about shifting this within yourself in a different video. But today I wanna to talk about how the I'm right, you're wrong style impacts your ability to communicate effectively with the other person on the other side of the table and a really easy trick you can use to combat it. I see four primary problems with the I'm right, you're wrong communication style. One, it increases defensiveness and hostility in the other party. This elicits the fight flight response and this leads to either argumentative or withholding communication style. So I'm either gonna fight it out with you or I'm going to fly away from you, right? Neither one which have the results that you typically want. Two, it breaks down effective communication because now you're focused on defending your turf instead of finding relational common values or solutions. Three, it leaves people feeling misunderstood or attacked, therefore sad, lonely, your emotional needs aren't being met, you start thinking of this relationship as poor quality. And four, you actually get the opposite of what most people want which is increased intimacy, you get less closeness, less intimacy. Everyone walks away more frustrated and distant than when you started. The antidote to I'm right, you're wrong communication is the use of two little magic words, for me, for me. When you put a for me in front of a statement you believe to be true, it radically changes the position and feel of the statement the energy shifts in the room. There's four benefits I'd like for you to consider in particular. One, for me, signals that you are making room for a perspective other than your own. It helps the other person receive the information as an opinion you are sharing instead of a fact that they now have to agree with or disprove. You're speaking from a space that has to do with your position, your understandings, you're signaling that you want to be understood instead of being proven right or wrong. Two, for me, comes across as less judgmental, attacking, and polarizing. It just does. <laughs> Three, for me, helps you present information in a way that really can't be argued with. People can argue with facts, perspectives, all day long. It's much more difficult to argue with your feelings or your lived experiences. Four, because of these points, for me, typically has the effect of lowering the defensive posture of your conversation partner, even if it's just a little bit, because that other person isn't forced into your worldview, which helps them relax and not be in that fight and flight response quite as quickly. They get the sense that there is room for a different perspective and it makes it easier for them to empathize and then also be a solution solver. Five, for me, steers the conversation into dialogue and curiosity relationship centered dynamics instead of ideology centered dynamics. After a for me is stated, it's easier and more natural to ask questions like, well, if that's the case, why is that the case for you? Or how did you come to those conclusions? Or why is this important? Or what's important about this for you? So let's try what this might feel like in regards to three themes I hear people fighting about all the time, religion, 
politics, and sex. I'm going to make a few statements not using the for me and then using it. And I want you to pay attention to see if you notice a slight difference in how the statements come across as you hear them. Being Christian is the one and only way back to God. For me, being Christian is the one and only way back to God. Belief in a God is an old fashioned tradition and not backed up by evidence. For me, belief in a God is an old fashioned tradition and not backed up by evidence. The Republican party doesn't care about gay and lesbian people and is racist. For me, the Republican party doesn't care about gay and lesbian people and is racist. The Democratic party has a socialist agenda and will be the end of our free market economy. For me, the Democratic Party has a socialist agenda and will be the end of our free market economy. You wanting to watch porn while we have sex is objectifying and offensive. For me, you wanting to watch porn while we have sex is objectifying and offensive. You not wanting to watch porn while we have sex is closed-minded and controlling. For me, you not wanting to watch porn while we have sex is closed-minded and controlling. Now, I purposefully chose some pretty dogmatic statements. These are all still very different approaches to different situations. And I'm not trying to say that using the for me will automatically bring about solutions or change minds. And yet it will make the likelihood of compromise go up or at least the feeling of respect between the two of you to have a much higher likely outcome. I'm right, your wrong approaches to dialogue shut down conversations. They polarize ideologies and they increase relational divides instead of bring, bridging them. For me approaches allow you to tell your truth and share your information in an authentic way while still signaling that you're open to the other person's perspective and their authenticity and that you have the emotional resilience to respect their position even if you disagree with it. Try it this week, try the for me approach Notice how it changes the energy in the room. This has been a solution-focused tip coming at you from yours truly, Natasha Helfer. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get notified the next time I post, which I try to do every week. See you next time.